Well we can get these pieces back in. This is the uh, lock lever here which locks the film at the end of the uh, when you reach the end of the film frame number one. There's the clip that holds it and this is its return spring. This little one here. It's a lighter gauge of wire than its mate here and it's a few, smaller number of coils. This is the release lever that releases the film advance to allow you to wind on to the next shot after you've exposed your film. Its spring is slightly heavier gauge wire and more coils. This is the spring from the tip of the release lever. And this is the screw for the top of the release lever. That allows us to make our adjustments so that we can get the point of release the same for the shutter and the film advance. Right to it. First thing I want to do is use a little bit of molybdenum paste through these holes in the body. Top and bottom. This is where those two shafts come through. Here, on this face inside here, you can probably tell it's it's dirty looking there. That's where the release lever gets pushed upwards by the shutter release, and so the spring bears against that surface and needs to be able to move freely. So I wipe some on there. And we'll start with the lock lever. Slides in here. Drops into the body, hold that with your finger from underneath, put the spring on the top, now yeah, holding that spring compressed with my thumb there, I'll pick up the retainer clip, the E clip or C clip, fit that onto the slot, use the tail of my tweezers, push that home. Normally I arrange that so that the open side of that C-clip faces to the front. Just helps it clear the release uh, button better. Just check that that moves freely and it returns to the up position. That's all good. Here I've got to get the spring back on the tip of this. I took this off before I cleaned things so that it wouldn't get lost in the cleaning process or damaged. And I've got to get that spring back over that boss. And the spring sits like that. Feed that in from the base, it goes in the front hole. When you're pushing this in, make sure that you do not get the spring hanging over the side of the body because otherwise you'll end up damaging it. Line that hole up. Just get the tip of my tweezers to help that line up. So our spring should be bearing against this surface inside there. Now holding that with my finger from underneath so it can't go anywhere. I can put this return spring in place over the top of that shaft. And put the screw in position. Now you're going into a split shaft here, so there's a certain amount of reluctance to start. So you take it easy. That screw started nicely and you can probably see that the screw head's not even contacting the spring yet. Wind that down a bit. As for the height of this, well it's got to go under this tab on the shutter release. So holding this up from the bottom, making sure that my shutter release is pushed to the top by pressing on the finger here, pushing that up. 
I can see the relative position of these two pieces. Now I can see that the shutter, the, I've got to wind that screw down further so that it will clear under that tab. That'll probably do nicely. That's that little piece done. Here are the three retaining screws. The bush from the base of the film sprocket, it goes into the round hole, not into the slotted hole. Put that to one side. And here we have the film advance shaft. So I'm going to pull that back up, get some synthetic grease on that shaft. And you could use whatever grease you happen to have to do that job. This is, is particularly good. I'm working that up and down to make sure that that's smooth. Run some into the spring. That's so that the spring revolves smoothly. That all appears good. Now these cam surfaces here, the release lever tracks across those so that the film advance will only move in the forward direction until you've finished the advance stroke, then it will return to the rest position. So I'm just running a bit of synthetic grease through there, lining up the three holes in the retainer plate here with the three holes visible here so I can get the screws in. That looks good. Open the back of the body. Take up spool in place, drop this down into position. Swinging that around, my take up spool's not dropping down very well, or the What's probably happening, get this back out, is that the spring here, which seats into a slot, into this retainer plate, if that's in the wrong position, this will not drop down into place because it won't go into the bush in the take-up spool. So sometimes it's a bit of a wriggle. It's going to be a bit of a wriggle today, I think. No, it's just dropped in. So here you can see that in this notch the lock levers drop down into position. In this notch our release levers drop down into position. And I'm looking for the three holes in the mounting plate and I'm not seeing them. So it means that this is rotated round slightly. Oh, there we go. Pull that back where we had it. Line up those holes. So I've got three holes visible there. Now the shaft at this stage, that spring is virtually untensioned. It's just sitting there slack. That's good. We're going to wind one full turn of tension on there when before we're done. So I've got one screw down into the hole there, just checking that those are lined up. Everything else is looking good. Get the other two screws in here. As usual, don't tighten the screws up until all 
all the screws are seated then you can go around and tighten the screws up I think these screws are, are not uncommonly loose when you get a camera for service in this case one of them was a little bit loose the other two were fine okay so that part is looking good that's exactly as we want it at the top here we have the pieces from the top and all this these three components form the clutch this is the bush that holds the top of the film advance shaft and keeps it from flopping from side to side has a gear on it which couples this gear through to this gear here here we have these parts go on the top of the shaft you have the gear the spring this piece this drive dog a washer the gear that drives the cocking rack and the screw that holds it here we have the little pull that stops the film advance from backing up or stops this mechanism from backing up here's the screw that holds it the shoulder screw a post that that passes through a bush and the return spring for this little pull this screw sits on the other side towards the back of the camera holds this plate down firmly and its other job is to support the cocking rack against that shoulder on the screw so first of all I want to lubricate this clutch mechanism and normally I use graphite grease for that though you could use synthetic grease or anything else that was handy alright so I'll take some graphite grease this is not the my favourite flavour of graphite grease that uh, eventually I ran out and couldn't find any more of the same but it is graphite grease and it still works pretty well for this purpose graphite of course is not a grease the graphite is a it's powdered graphite which is suspended in a greasy medium I'll just find the right pliers for getting this thing together so I've got to get that spring compressed these circlet pliers work well for me so taking my spring I'm fitting that over the central piece get the tab hooked into the slot at the top lower my circlet pliers over the top my crimp lugged pliers over the top rotate this which pulls the spring inwards and keeping this firmly held don't squeeze it tight because you'll damage the spring I can drop this over the top and that's my clutch assembled now this will move smoothly in one direction with some drag it'll be stiffer in the other direction the direction it moves smoothly as I revolve this holding the central tab here with my finger and thumb you can see I'm revolving this anti-clockwise that moves nice and smoothly that's the way it's supposed to move I'll take some synthetic grease quick wipe through the inside there drop that in on the top of my film advance shaft rotate that so that the two little tabs drop in onto the take up spool and we want this piece this will be dry because it's been removed all the grease and stuff was removed in the cleaning process so first I'm going to force some grease into that little pinion set there put a big blob of grease on there just force it on with your thumb and the hydraulic pressure will push it in make sure it runs smoothly drop that into the camera the 
this is the screw post. Now, am I doing this in the right order? Yes, I am. Sorry, it's uh, a year since I've last been doing this, and as a result, I'm a little bit rusty. This bush goes on next. The bush has a countersink on one side. Make sure that goes down. The plain side must be up. Here is the pole that sits on there. And here is the screw that passes through the pole. Now I'm just going to put a touch of synthetic grease on the top of that screw shaft where it passes through the pole just so that there's no undue friction between that and the pole and just check that that pole moves freely I'll tighten those two screws up that part's done Take some synthetic grease, here's our gear set, I'll just run some underneath the, that underneath so that it runs smoothly on here, wipe through the centre, rotate that, it should engage with this gear here too, it does, there you go. The spring for the pole. Let's get that seated. The leg sticking down must go in here. That's to push the pole towards the gear. Let's see if I can get this seated. This can sometimes be a wriggle. Other times it just falls into place. What's it going to be today? No, it's good. So that if I rotate that gear now, you'll see that ball dropping into the teeth. Now my film advance shaft has shifted, which is not uncommon. I'll just rotate that so that the two levers drop into their spots. Now I can see the top of the shaft better. This spring, I usually give that a wipe of synthetic grease. It needs virtually nothing there. It's just handy to have a bit of something on there because that's a high carbon steel spring, leaf spring if you like. And um, you know, things like that are prone to rust if they don't have something on them to protect them. Put that drive dog on. Put this one on. Put the washer on there, that's important that washer, it's not just to take up space, it does, it does important things. Put the little gear on the top, check that that's all seated nicely. And now here's the screw. I'm taking my screwdriver which has been butchered to do this job nicely, I can get that screw in place. making sure I'm not putting any downward pressure on here because I don't want to push the shaft down and disengage that gear from the squared top of the shaft. Okay, so that's all good. You can nip that up. You can, if you like, put a spot of lacquer in those two screw holes, those two holes there, which will lock that screw and help make sure it doesn't ever come loose. That's uh, a pretty optional thing, that one. Okay, so that part's done. Now if I open the back of the camera and rotate the sprocket with my thumb, you'll see that it, you'll see that that runs that piece at the top there, 
And basically that action where you see this dropping down out of the way, that's the action that takes place on the rewind stroke, on, on the return stroke, when you return the advanced lever to the rest position. So that's all looking good. I think we'll have the sprocket in next. Right, first thing I want to do here is put this lever back in place. Now this lever is the lock lever for the rewind button. And basically its job is to lock the rewind button when you press it in so that you don't have to hold your thumb on it the entire time you're rewinding the film. In some cameras of course that's something that you always have to do. Okay, so I'll get that in there. Now I'm being very careful here not to lose this rubber band because I do not want to have to... I'll just get that shaft back up. I do not want to lose that spring and have to open up the entire front to retrieve it. So the return spring for this, I'll normally just drop that in there like that. Get this shoulder screw in position. Two shoulders on that screw, one for the spring, one for this lever. I'm just looking at the tip of that lever. I'm going to check the way that works. Might be just a trick of the light. It looked like it was bent down slightly, which would not be good. So if I can fish up the end of the spring, pull it over past the end of the lever, I'm just checking that the lever moves back freely and returns under spring tension. That all looks perfect. Let's take this. Run a little bit of grease on here. This is where it runs through the casting. And a bit on here. Usually I give the gear a bit of a wipe at the top just for good, me good measure. Open the back of the camera. Here's our sprocket. Let's close that front up now. I'll lay this down on the bench. Here's our sprocket. This goes in the slot, goes to the top of the camera. Shaft drops down through. At the base, you probably have to pull that shaft into line with the casting. Yep, yeah, that's it. If I pull this lever back, I can press it up even further, that's good. Now it's engaged with the gear here at the top. Hold my finger on that so it doesn't fall down. We have the return spring for the rewind button. I'll just run some grease through that. Fit that on the button. Fit the washer on the button, holding my finger on the top to stop that shaft disappearing, I'll get that screw started. And I'm just checking here that it passes through the washer, that the washer is not trapped on the shoulder of the screw and that looks good. Now that's only finger tight of course, we've got nothing to tighten up against. This is the screw that couples the shaft to the uh, sprocket and I'm just rotating this until I see the screw hole come up. Now sometimes this screw starts very easily, other times it doesn't. If it doesn't, try rotating the shaft 180 degrees and coming in from the other side. Sometimes one side has a better lead than the other. That started straight away, no arguments. Tighten that screw up. 
Now I can hold the sprocket shaft with my thumb and use my pliers to tighten the rewind button and you know when it's tight enough because your thumb hurts. Okay, so now my film advance, my take-up spool and my sprocket are coupled together but there is a clutch in here so if I hold the sprocket with my thumb I can turn the take-up spool. You'll get some resistance of course, that's how it should be. But that's that part dealt with. And the bottom of the camera can be closed up. So we want the chrome trim for the base plate and all the screws. Alright, well that's all looking pretty good so far. So to get the chrome trim on the base plate and close things up, next thing I want to do is tension up that film advance. So to achieve that I need a couple of pairs of tweezers. Alright, so first thing I'll do is press the lock lever up, push that to one side, get it out of the way. Now I've just got this propped up on a block of foam at the moment so things are possibly not as tidy as they should be. Alright, if I hold my release lever back out of the way I'll rotate this one full turn clockwise drop both the lock lever and the release lever back in position. Now we've got tension on that film advance that means the film advance lever will return to the rest position. We have seven screws holding this cover on the base of the camera these are all nickel plated screws. They are the same size as the two chrome plated screws that hold the top cover on the camera. Do not mix them up because nickel plated screws do not look nice against chrome. It's not uncommon to find a camera with a chrome plated screw fitted in a position like this and the nickel plated screw up on the top cover or chrome plated screws in the base of the camera and chrome plated screws at the top because the person realised their mistake and went and got some from the spare parts department. Just about out of the picture here I'll get these last three screws in and tighten them up. Now I'm being careful here not to press the lock lever or the release lever or lose my rubber band off the top of the camera because otherwise things go bad. If I depress the shutter release, the release lever and the lock lever the film advance tension will go, it'll just unwind and I'll have to retention it which is only easily achieved with the cover off so I don't want to do that. I've got my film advance lever here which can sit in place and I should have three screws to hold that in position. And once the lever's on, the tension can't be lost, and we can test the film advance. Put them up nice and snug. Right. So if I press the release shaft, that's the screw, if I hold my finger down on that shaft and hold it there that unlocks the film advance so I can swing it through a full arc comes back to the rest position and it's locked in the rest position until I press the release lever and hold my finger on the lock but the shaft lever 
and you can wind again. So that's moving smoothly. You can watch the gears at the top of the camera. That's good. With that in place, next thing we want, I think, is the cocking rack. Here's our cocking rack. I'll check this carefully. The teeth are all in a good condition. That should work fine. I'm saying you don't see any problems with that. So, taking some synthetic grease. Bit of wipe there, making sure I catch the teeth. Wipe on this piece, making sure I catch the teeth. It doesn't hurt to have some either side there. And the camera body back into position. Fit this in. Just rotating this take up the shaft with my finger. Now, that can often fit in one of two tooth positions here. Um, just checking that that moves smoothly. That looks okay. I think that's quite a good position there. Put the chrome trim plate on the top here. Put the strap plug on. If there was a washer underneath the strap lug before you started, a shim washer, you may want to put that back. Clearances often change over time as components wear, so where a shim washer was required once upon a time, it may no longer be required. And uh, conversely, depending on how things are configured, where one was not required previously, it now might be required. So be aware of shim washers. Now I'm just removing that rubber band for a second. Being very careful not to tip the camera on its head. And this bracket goes on here. Screw at this end. Turn that screw up lightly, and this post goes in this position here. And I've got a special driver for that. Otherwise, you can you can achieve it with pliers. You've just got to be pretty cautious about it. That's all. I'll run that screw up. And these screws up. Check my film advance to make sure it's moved smoothly and releases at the end of the stroke. If you have your cocking rack one tooth too far advanced, what can happen is I'll take this cover off so you can see. We might just be on the cusp of that with this camera. What, ha what can happen is that the cocking rack will drive into the chrome trim plate here. In an ideal world it will pass underneath it, but it probably won't. It will ride into that chrome trim plate and stop. And so that the motion is difficult to, con to complete. Yeah, I can see that that's, that's sort of catching on there just. Uh, what do I want to do? There's a couple of ways to deal with this. One of them is this. You can slacken that screw off and slacken that screw off. Pull the whole shaft back towards the rewind end of the camera. Tighten those two screws up. And just put this back in place and see how it behaves.
Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. That feels feels just nice now. It's there's no no reluctance at the end of the stroke to come back to the rest position. I could have achieved the same by moving the cocking rack one tooth back this way, but uh, I didn't need to. So I'll get this strap plug in at this end of the camera. It's held on with two screws. Usually the secret here is to get the screws started. The strap plug is the holes in it are slotted. I found from experience the best place for the strap plug is pushed as far towards the end of the camera as possible against those screw heads. Nip those screw heads up and we're done. Now I'm still being very careful here not to tip the camera on its head because I don't want to lose that shutter release shaft. Okay, so I can put my rubber band back on there. It's more firmly fixed at this end now. And that's the film advance dealt with. The top's back on the camera. Um, this is pretty well advanced now.